Hello friends and welcome back to the Homesteading Housewife. I am Monica for those of you that are new and today we are making baked sloppy joe sliders. <sighs> just saying it gets the taste buds going and you just get all excited. So I'm going to bring you along for it. It's made from scratch, not the buns. The buns are store bought and let's get started. All right y'all. So this honestly could not be more simple and you could even so if you do my home canned Sloppy Joe mix, which has the meat in it, then this would be so super simple to make. But I do not have any of that right now, but we will be stocking our shelves here soon. So we have two pounds of hamburger and two little onions. They were about like this. Chopped up, browned everything up together. The onions are cooked through. And so now we're going to make our Sloppy Joe sauce. Now there are so many different recipes Today, I am just eyeballing everything. I know what I usually put in, so we're just going to make it, and it's going to be delicious. So first, we want some salt, and then this actually has garlic in it, which we need, because I want to be lazy and not put, and not chop up garlic cloves, and I don't currently have any garlic powder. And then we have some pepper. You want about two cups of ketchup. We're just gonna let that sit and get the last out of it here in a minute. You can use brown sugar, but today I am actually going to be using my sorghum, honestly, because I don't wanna go downstairs into the pantry and get some molasses to make the uh, brown sugar. So instead, we're gonna do sorghum. So it's gonna give it a delicious twist. And we'll taste it before uh, we add any sugar because sorghum is a lot sweeter than molasses. So it's going to give a different flavor. And then we want some chili powder. About a teaspoon. And I have the heat turned down below. Add a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. All we're really doing is cooking it through, making sure our sauce is nice and thick, and then it is ready for the next step, because we are going a little extra today, and it's going to be so good. Also, haven't been to the grocery store in well over a month, and it has been kind of excellent. I mean, I am going to be going here soon, uh, in the next couple days, actually, because I'm finally running out of cream and milk, but... It has been nice not having to go to the store and look at the prices, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Okay, so let's give it... Mm. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Okay, so we are going to add just a touch more sorghum, but it does not need any sugar. So if you have sorghum, I highly recommend you try this recipe. <laughs> I have never used sorghum, and so I thought, why not? Because I like it in barbecue sauce, and this is kind of like a barbecue sauce that you're making to make Poppy Joe's. I'm adding a little more garlic and salt uh, just to help balance the sweetness. And then I'm also going to grab a little paprika. Yeah. 
about a tablespoon of paprika. And then I'm putting in a pinch of cayenne in. Most of my kids actually like it spicy, so it works out great. Okay. And then we're just going to let this kind of marry for about five minutes, and then we'll taste test. Okay. So this is gone for about five minutes, and it's, ah, on the board. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. You are. This is phenomenal. So I know really hurts my fingers. <laughs> I've been dealing with chicken noir. Mm. I have like micro cuts. If you've ever dealt with chicken noir without gloves, which I know is stupid. You know what I'm talking about. With this. Mm. Okay. So this is ready to go. So let me bring you over to the counter so we can assemble. Okay. Alright, so I have a greased 9 by 13 I actually cooked bacon in this this morning. So, it is going to have a nice bacon flavor to go with it. I was given the Hawaiian rolls. They could be homemade rolls. Whatever you want to use. But I need to use these Hawaiian rolls. So, you're going to lay that bottom layer. I've kind of broken them up. I just... So if they don't spread out and fill the pan, which some of them might not, those are tops. <laughs> oh, no, they are bottoms. Then I just like to migrate everything towards the middle. And everything can be touching. Okay. And then you want to ladle right over top. And then a couple of these, I'm going to put some pickles down at the bottom. These are a spicy bread and butter. And they're delicious. probably could have fit in an 8x8 and I would have put a second batch in here if I would have had it but I didn't I only had one small pack so that is a-okay now we're gonna add some American cheese you can add whatever cheese you like American is just what my husband likes anybody get hurt no all right add your toppers And it does not have to be perfect. Okay, and lastly, make yourself some garlic butter. You can use regular butter, but I'm telling you, garlic butter just throws it all over the top. And just pour it over everything. Okay, now this is going to go into a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. All you're looking for is nice golden brown, crispy looking, and of course all the cheese is nice and melted. Okay, so here is what it should look like whenever it comes out. Everything is nice and toasted. It's going to look like it's mushy on the bottom, but I promise you it toasts up. I mean, it is going to be softer in places because of the butter. But this, there it is. It is so good. And like I said, you can make this however you want. Any type of cheese. You can do deli meat if you want to go that route. It's just phenomenal and the leftovers if 
big if you have leftovers because of the butter and stuff that pretty much basted it in you want to toast them so if you put them in the microwave they're going to get soggy but if you toast them they'll crisp up around the edges again and it'll be just like you freshly took them out of the oven so i hope you enjoyed this video try it out for yourself i'm telling you if you want to wow your family with an upgraded sloppy joe this is the way to do it so until next time thanks for watching